Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will show you how to paint a swan in watercolor based on this reference photo. The swan is taking off and it is splashing a lot of water, so we will be using masking fluid to reserve these splashes. So the general step is from pencil drawing to applying masking fluid and then moving from the background to painting the swan. And finally, we will adjust the details. We are going to use a limited palette. The main colors are French ultramarine and yellow ochre. And um, I'm also using sepia and burnt sienna. Here I have listed all the other materials I used. I want to point out that for applying the masking fluid or the splashes, we're mainly using a old toothbrush that you won't use anymore. But you can also use an old brush or a water brush for some details. The pencil sketch is easy for this one, so I'm fast forwarding. The only thing I want to say about the sketch is make sure that your pencil lines are not too dark, especially where it is light in value or the pencil line will show through the watercolor and since what is attractive of this reference photo is this light that shine through its feathers so re you really want to keep your paper very clean there the most part of this one is lighter in value than the background there are two general approaches to painting this one one is to paint around the swan and the second is to reserve the shape of the swan with masking fluid. Of course, each approach has its own pros and cons. And for the first approach, the main advantage is you can achieve uh, soft edges around the outline of the swan, so it's more natural looking. However, the disadvantage of this approach is it might be very challenging to paint the water surface around the swan, especially if you want to paint those horizontal light reflections in one go. And for the second approach, the main advantage is that you can freely paint the water across the paper over the body of the swan. But the main disadvantage will be when you remove the masking fluid, it will leave a very blobby, unnatural shape of the swan. So it won't be that natural looking. But of course, the disadvantages of both approaches can be salvaged if you use lifting colors. And in this painting, I will choose the first approach and I will show you how you can overcome its disadvantage. So the pencil sketching is done. Now we're going to apply masking fluid. For these very dynamic splashes, we are going to use an old toothbrush to apply the masking fluid. You can pour the masking fluid into the lid, which I don't really recommend after trying it. It's probably better. Go into a small, wider mouth container. You're going to dip the toothbrush into the masking fluid. Make sure it gets onto the bristles. And then you're going to tilt it like this and use your finger to flick it and you can change slightly the shape of the splashes by controlling how fast and strong you flick the bristles, if that makes sense. Of course, the angle of the brush will also make a difference. And I highly recommend that you try this out before doing this painting. Now I'm using a water brush filled with soap water and I'm dipping it into masking fluid and paint some lines of highlights I want to preserve. Using soap water just makes it much easier to remove the dried masking fluid from the tip of the brush so that you can protect the bristles of the brush. And you can also just use a regular watercolor brush and first dip it in soap water and then dip it in masking fluid and then apply the masking fluid. I'm only using the water brush to preserve some tiny highlights on the water surface that might be difficult to leave out during the painting process. Now I'm using a masking fluid eraser to remove already dried up masking fluid in areas that I don't want it. Now we're going to wet the paper. For this painting, I decided to tape up the paper onto a gator board and only wet one side. 
my thinking is like this. I want it to be wet to achieve some soft edges, but I don't want it to be wet for so long that I cannot achieve dry brush stroke effects for the water surface. That's why I'm only wetting one side. After waiting for the paper to absorb excess water, I'm using a paper towel to further dry the areas of the swan so that when I apply watercolor paint to the water surface, it won't run into the shape of the swan. I have made a big puddle of dark blue with French ultramarine and a little bit sepia. And you want to make sure that you have mixed enough paint. And you also want to make sure the mixture is dark enough because in order for the swan to pop out, we have to make sure the background is dark enough. So when you are making a big puddle of watercolor, you might misjudge the strength of the color. So make sure you put a lot of paint and a lot of water. I'm using a sable flat brush to paint the water surface. And when I'm approaching the swan, I am becoming very careful. And since the paper is not that wet, if you are too careful and taking too long to paint the water surface, it is easy to leave dry edges. I would suggest painting the water surface relatively fast so that you don't go back and rework it or it will lose its freshness. If there's any mistakes in the shape of the swan, we can always lift the paint out later because we're using non-staining color. So to summarize, we want the background to be dark, so we want a very dark mixture. But because it is a little bit challenging to paint around the shape of the swan, so you have to slow down a little bit, you want to make sure the puddle is also wet enough, meaning you have a lot of water and the paint in this puddle of dark blue. Because we only wet one side of the paper, so the paper won't be very flat, and then there might be puddles of paint that accumulate in the corners. If this kind of situations happen, try to tilt the board so that the excess paint can flow to the rest of the paper. If you don't do that early enough, it will leave a cauliflower. Now I'm mixing a darker color with sepia and a French ultramarine and I go in wetting wet to darken certain area of the surface and also create more texture. This mixture needs to be thicker than the blue mixture earlier. You don't need to copy the pattern of reflections in the reference photo because it's just going to be too complicated at this stage. So if it's too much for you, you can just forget about the light reflections and we can retrieve them later. And for the shape of the swan, if the blue color eats into the swan's shape, it's also okay. We can also salvage that later. Even though we don't need to follow the reference photo closely, here under the swan's wing, we have to paint it with the color of water because in order for the white, the light part to pop out, it has to be against a dark color. Now I'm washing off the paint from my brush and picking up very light French ultramarine and continue with the foreground. So the foreground in the reference photo is mostly white. I decided to go with a very pale French ultramarine and leave some breaks of white paper because you don't want it to be completely white, which will compete for tension with the swan. As long as the paper is still damp, it is safe to deepen certain areas to create some reflections. But if you see the paper is already very dry, like you can already create dry brush stroke effect, then stop there, wait for the paper to dry completely, and then re-wet it, and then deepen it. 
As I mentioned earlier, one of the main disadvantages of this approach is that you cannot freely brush across the paper. So when you are painting those dark reflections, it creates a unnatural gap around the neck of the swan. So here I'm using a darker paint to go back in and trying to make up for that. And I'm tilting the board to encourage the flow of the paint on the left side towards the neck of the swan because I want to use less paint and less brush strokes so that I don't disturb too much of the paint already laid down. The paper in the foreground is kind of already dry so I can create dry brush strokes so I'm just brushing across the paper to create some darker lines and I'm using a flat brush so by using it horizontally or vertically you can make different shapes of lines. Now I'm switching to a round brush and add a little bit sepia to the French ultramarine mixture and deepen certain area under the body of the swan while the paper is still damp. Now we're going to paint the swan. First, we're going in with a very light wash of French ultramarine for the belly of the swan. Then I'm using a clean damp brush to soften the edges of this belly when it's approaching the right side, the light part. Now I'm picking up some very light burnt sienna and drop wet in wet into this blue wash so that the pigments can blend on paper naturally. And on top of the belly, I drop in some yellow ochre so that some variation of the dark. In this way, the shadows will look more lively rather than some flat shadow color. I'm going to do the same thing for all the parts that are in shadow for the swan. Basically start with a very pale French ultramarine wash and then drop in yellow ochre or burnt sienna to let them blend on paper. For the wings, as you can see from the reference photo, the part that's bordering water surface is actually very light and then it gets dark. So make sure you leave a gap when you're painting the light blue wash. To vary things a little bit, for this wing, actually I'm just going to go in with a very light yellow ochre wash and darken it with a darker mixture of yellow ochre and a little bit burnt sienna. And now I'm mixing yellow ochre and a little bit burnt sienna to paint the lines that you can see of the feathers. In order to get straighter lines, do the brush stroke faster because your hands will shake if you draw or paint slowly. I am darkening this part with a little bit more darker mixture so that the values look correct. So now I'm adding a very light French ultramarine into the top part of the wing, but also don't forget to leave a gap of untouched white paper on top. If you find the lines between the feathers too harsh, you can just soften it with a clean damp brush. And then you can do this for the edges of the wings so that it looks softer. Just dampen it with a clean damp brush and dab it with a tissue paper. I'm giving the tip of the wing also a very light yellow color. 
Now that the wings are done, I can see the dark part of its body is not dark enough. So I am darkening it with more sepia. I saw that a part of the wing is not correct in value. So I am dampening it with a clean damp brush and then dab it with tissue. I am doing that to other parts of the swan and fixing the values. The paper is already dry on its neck, so I am dampening it with a clean damp brush and then I am going in with a very light wash of yellow ochre and a tiny bit burnt sienna. The swan's neck is a cylinder. So if you observe the reference photo closely, you will see that the middle part of its neck is darker and when it's on the edge, like when it's curving, it's actually a little bit brighter than the darkest part. So when you're adding darker colors into the neck area, take care to leave out a little bit when it's approaching the edge of the neck on the shaded side. Now I'm making a very thick black mixture from the blue and sepia and I'm going to paint the dark, I don't know what they are, the dark patterns on its head. Now I'm picking up some brown mixture on my palette to add some details on its wing and the tail. The, the wing is still damp, so when I drop in the darker color, wetting wet now, it will blend. I saw there is a spot in the foreground and so I tried to brush it over with some dark color but then I realized the color doesn't stay there. So I wiped it off and then realized that might be a stain from probably the hand cream on my hand when I was doing the pencil drying. So I tried to remove some of the paint around it to make it less unnatural but doesn't really work that much so I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Now I'm trying to create some dry brush strokes in the foreground. But if you don't like it, then you can just wet it and adjust it. As you can see, the dark color on the swan's head is much lighter when it's dry. So I am darkening it with the same mixture now that the paper is almost dry. Also, I'm using a synthetic round brush so that I can control the water in the brush. As the paper dries up, you will notice areas that need adjustment. So here I'm also adjusting this shaded area of the swan's belly so that its wing can pop out better. Now I'm switching to a synthetic dagger brush, which has very hard bristles and I'm using it to remove some paint from the wings. Basically, I dampen it and then rub it against the paper and then dab it with a tissue paper. In this way, you can retrieve lost highlights. Now I'm switching to a small flat brush. 
and I'm picking up some blue mixture from my palette and I'm going to do some dry brush across the paper to create more texture for the water surface. Now I'm switching to a clean damp pocket brush and trying to fix some of the reflections that I don't like. So basically the same recipe, rub it with the clean damp brush and then dab it off with the tissue paper. After fixing the shapes that I don't like, I went back to adding dry brush strokes across the paper to finish the water surface. I waited the paper to be completely dry and then use the masking fluid the eraser to remove all the masking fluid. Now I'm going to retrieve some highlights by rubbing the clean damp brush against the paper and then dab it off with the tissue, the same recipe. Now the final adjustment of details. If you're happy with the painting, then you can consider it done. But now I'm just checking for the details, whether all the value relationships are correct, whether I need to deepen something or remove some paint to restore some highlights. If you want softer edges, you can always wet the paper again with a clean damp brush and go in with the color. I'm done with the painting. Here is the final result. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe.